Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Seema. I'm going to present a few cases of conotruncal abnormalities. I work as a radiologist in Janani Scanning Center. My co-author is Dr. Anand Sagar K. Patil. Uh, conotruncal abnormalities are a broad category of congenital heart diseases that include a variety of conditions like tetralogy of fallow and its variety, variants like absent pulmonary wall and uh, tetralogy of fallow with pulmonary atresia, double outlet right ventricle and its variants, transposition of great arteries, and persistent truncus arteriosus. These are relatively common anomalies in postnatal series, comprising about 10 to 10 to 12 percent of all the congenital heart defects diagnosed after birth. However, the prenatal diagnosis of these anomalies is more challenging since most of these anomalies have a normal four-chamber view during routine fetal screening. The prevalence in reported series varies from 2.5 to 21 percent with a diagnostic accuracy of 75 to 90 percent for achieving a complete diagnosis. The aims and objectives of our study was to identify the fetuses with conotruncal abnormalities through transabdominal ultrasound using standard planes as per ISO guidelines to study imaging features of conotruncal abnormalities. So the materials and the methods used were the fetuses were examined transabdominally in all antenatal cases between 70 to 26 weeks of gestation. Standard axial planes were taken and analyzed. Complementary sagittal and parasagittal views were also acquired in suspected cases where we had to look at the aortic arch, ductal arch, and the bicable view. Findings were confirmed by prenatal autopsy and or review of images by the experts. 763 fetuses between the gestational age of 17 weeks to 26 weeks were examined in the period of 24 months from June 2019 to June 2021. 20 fetuses were diagnosed with the structural defects consistent with conotruncal abnormalities, out of which we are presenting 10 cases. Diagnosis was confirmed by post-mortem examination or expert review. With careful survey of atrioventricular and ventricular arterial concordance, we could diagnose five cases of 20 weeks at 20 weeks, one at 19 weeks, two cases at 21 to 22 weeks, one at 17 weeks and one at 26 weeks. History of consanguinity was present in two cases. All of them were terminated. We could convince one patient for autopsy and confirm the findings. Now coming to the case one. The clinical history, 30 year old primary came for anomaly scan 20 week, at 20 weeks. Second uh, degree consanguinity was present and no significant family history was present. The ultrasound findings were there was no uh, in the outflow tract views. We could see that there was no crossover. Parallel course of two arteries was seen. The aorta was arising from the anterior right ventricle, whereas the pulmonary artery is connected posteriorly with the left ventricle. Ventricular arterial discordance was found, whereas there was uh, vent atrioventricular concordance with. Uh, right ventricle connected to the iota and the left ventricle connected to the pulmonary artery. In three vessel trachea view, we could see only two vessels with a typical eye sign and all these findings were consistent with transposition of great arteries. Coming to the images, uh, in this image, we confirmed that there was situs solitus. The, the baby, was, the fetus was in uh, cephalic, uh, cephalic presentation. So the vertebral body, the spondic bubble and the apex all should be in clockwise direction as it was so. So it was a situs solitus. We confirmed the situs. Next thing what we did was we had to confirm the uh, uh, situs of the uh, heart. That is the right, the right side was the right side. That is the right atrium was draining into the right ventricle and the left atrium was draining into the left ventricle. So we confirmed that there was an atrioventricular concordance. But in the outflow tracts, we could visualize the paralleling. And the careful examination of the outflow tract showed us that there was a non-branching vessel, non-branching vessel, which was arising from the anterior ventricle, that was the right ventricle. And that made us conclude that it was the iota, which was arising from the right ventricle. And in the uh, uh, three, uh, three vessel trachea view, we could see only eye sign. Only one vessel was seen. That was a superior vena cava and the 
single large vessel was seen in three vessel tracheary so we confirm we confirmed the diagnosis that it was a complete transposition of great arteries coming to our next case it was a 25 year old primary who came to us for a routine scan at 26 weeks non consanguineous marriage there was no significant family history the ultrasound findings were the connections of the systemic and the pulmonary veins was normal that was the pulmonary veins were draining into the left atrium and the inferior and superior vena cava were draining into the right atrium but when we went on to see the atrium draining into the vent uh, ventricle what we found was there was a abnormal connection of the atria and the ventricle that is atrioventricular discordance and the position of the ventricles was reversed the morphological right ventricle was seen connecting the left atrium and the morphological left ventricle was seen connecting the right atrium so the ventricular anatomy rest, uh, showed us there was a uh, atrioventricular discordance minimal fluid was seen in the pericardium and the great uh, vessels uh, when we had a look at the great vessels there was no crossover and both the arteries were following a parallel cross co course instead of uh, the criss crossing so the aorta was arising from the anterior right ventricle and the pulmonary artery was arising from the left ventricle uh, this findings that's consistent with con corrected transposition of great arteries let's have a look at the images so first of all it was a breech presentation so we expect the vertebral body stomach and the apex to be in the uh, anti clockwise direction this is situs solitus so the situs was confirmed visceral situs was confirmed but when we had a look at the uh, situs of the heart the left atrium was seen connecting to the right ventricle and the right atrium was seen connecting to the left ventricle now how do how did we come to the then this conclusion was the left atrium was being separated from the uh, lower ventricle by tricuspid wall and there was a moderator band in the ventricle so we concluded that it was a right ventricle now when we concluded that this was a right ventricle then we went on to look at the outflow tracts the morphologically looking left ventricle which was draining the right atrium was being drained by the main pulmonary artery which was a dividing vessel but we know that left ventricle gives rise to a non branching vessel that is the aorta so uh, here we found that there was double discordance so double discordance is always consistent with the finding of um, corrected uh, tga and the, in the sag images we could see that the aortic arch was arising from the right ventricle and the ductus arch was just beneath it and this confirmed our diagnosis that there is a parallel orientation of the great arteries because of the double discordance there is also corrected tga this image shows us that the pulmonary artery the main pulmonary artery is arising from the left ventricle and giving its branches the pulmonary artery was in, was normal in its caliber so this is a 3d image which confirms all our findings this is a right atrium draining into the smooth wall left ventricle and that is being drained by the pulmonary artery this is a left atrium draining into the right ventricle and further draining into the aorta so this confirmed our diagnosis so this is a case 3 29 year old primary who came to us at uh, 22 weeks for anomaly scan non consanguineous marriage no family history uh, here in this case we could find that the position of the ventricles was normal atrial connections were normal ventricular anatomy showed us a 3.6 mm size inlet vsd uh, great arteries both the outflow tracts were seen arising from the morphological right ventricle with anterior large aorta and posterior pulmonary artery in three vessel trachea view we could see a single large vessel which was aorta atrioventricular septum we could see a subpulmonic vsd ductal arch and aortic arch were seen paralleling so this made us think about tau sig being form of uh, double uh, outlet right ventricle with subpulmonic and inlet vsd so coming to the uh, images so this was a breech presentation again the vertebral uh, vertebral body the stomach and the apex all all are on the same side or in the anti clock uh, direction and uh, this confirms the situs solitus right atrium it was draining into the right ventricle left atrium into the left ventricle we could find a in less vsd there then after going after passing on to the outflow tract we could see that there was a vsd just beneath the great vessels which was a beneath this pulmonary 
artery. And uh, this is was called as subpulmonic VSD. We could see that the right ventricle uh, was uh, giving rise to the iota as well as the main pulmonary artery. There was paralleling of the arches as seen in this figure, aortic arch and the ductal arch. Aortic arch arising from the anterior ventricle that was the right ventricle. Here in this image, we can clearly see the origins of the outflow tracts arising from the right ventricle. That concludes us to the diagnosis of toxic Bing type of uh, double outlet right ventricle. Double outlet right ventricle uh, are of four types depending upon uh, from where exactly is the uh, are the blood uh, vessels arising. Uh, here, the most important things which we should look at are the relation of the great vessels, the position of the VSD, presence or absence of pulmonary uh, pulmonary stenosis, absence of or mitroiotic and mitropulmonary continuity. The diagnosis of DORV is important because they're associated with trisomy 18 and 13. Then the types, DORV with subiotic VSD, DORV with subpulmonic uh, VSD, doubly committed VSD, and remote VSD. These are the four kinds of DORVs. Coming to the case for 30 years old primary, came for uh, a routine scan at 20 weeks and uh, non-consanguinous marriage, no family history. Four chamber showed uh, mild asymmetry uh, with uh, right ventricular predominance. The iota is dilated and overriding. There is a septoiotic discontinuity, and we could also find a malaligned VSD of 1.9 millimeters. The pulmonary artery in this case was normal. Our diagnosis was uh, isolated finding, which is malaligned VSD with overriding of iota. So this is a four chamber. Uh, this is a, a five chamber view, which shows us that the iota is overriding. It is doubly committed to the left and the right ventricle. Rest all findings were normal. The pulmonary artery was normal. If the pulmonary artery was smaller, we could have diagnosed it to be a tetralogy of fallow, but that wasn't the case. Case number five, 27-year-old primary came for anomaly scan, non-consanguinous marriage, no family history. Uh, here, what we could see is uh, the cardiac apex was uh, centrally placed, that was mesocardia, and the great vessels uh, were abnormal. Ventricular arterial discordance was found. Iota was arising from the right ventricle. Pulmonary artery, in this case, was atretic. On three-vessel view, we could see a single large vessel that was iota left... Uh, to the left of the superior vena cava. Uh, AVSD was noted. The apex in the center, the atrioventricular concordance was maintained. The vessels arising from the anterior chamber uh, did not show bifurcation. That confirmed that it was iota, but it was giving uh, neck vessels. So this suggested the diagnosis of PGA. And in this case, the pulmonary artery was smaller. So we, came, we gave a diagnosis of complete transposition of great arteries with atrioventricular septal defect and pulmonary arteries. These are the findings. There is mesocardia. There is uh, atrioventricular uh, concordance. There is AVSD. And uh, this is the right uh, ventricle giving rise to a non-branching vessel, which is aorta. In three-vessel trachea, we have single... Uh, single vessel to the left of the iota. This is a SAGE view showing us that the iota is arising from the right ventricle. This is a AVSD. Case six, 25 year old tiny anomaly scan at 20 weeks, non-consanguinous marriage, no significant family history. The, on examination of the heart, we could find that there is left axis deviation. There was 2.2 millimeter perimembranous VSD noted. Iota and pulmonary artery are seen arising from the right ventricle. Pulmonary artery appeared narrow compared to the iota. Three vessel trachea view shows only two vessels. Thymus was also absent. This is a complex, uh, complex cardiac case of uh, DORV with atretic pulmonary artery and right sided aortic arch. So this is a perimembranous VSD here. This uh, slide shows us there are two only two vessels at 3VTV. And the iota is crossing on the right side of the trachea. So this is the right-sided aortic arch. This is to show that the pulmonary artery and the iota both are arising from the single ventricle, that is the right ventricle. So this is um, case 7, 31-year-old G2P1, came for anomaly scan, second degree consanguinity, no family history. Situs was normal. There was a uh, septoiotic discontinuity measuring 5.4 millimeters. Iota was dilated and overriding. Three-vessel trachea view showed that there was uh, the iota appeared dilated and showed forward flow. And this was a case of tetralogy of fallow. This confirms the atrioventricular uh, concordance in the four chamber view. Then the uh, uh, five chamber view, it shows that the iota is, there is a septoiotic discontinuity. 
there is a septoidic and discontinuity very well very nicely shown here and uh, as compared to the aorta pulmonary artery was looking very narrow so this made us conclude that it was a case of uh, uh, tetralogy of fallow these are few findings on autopsy which was confirmed there was overriding of aorta there was a uh, ventricular septal defect there is a small tiny vessel which is seen here pulmonary stenosis case 8 18 year old primary who came to us at 17 to 18 weeks for early anomaly scan in non consanguineous marriage and no significant family history uh, here we could find a single vessel draining both the ventricles committed to the right uh, committed to uh, committed more to the left ventricle suggestive of common arterial trunk bar pulmonary atresia with vsd so these are the finding showing a single large vessel committed to both the ventricles and this is a color flow which confirms which tells us that there is only a single vessel single vessel draining both the ventricles so case 9 uh, it was a 21 year old primary came for anomaly scan at 19 weeks non consanguineous marriage no family history on ultrasound panning we could find that the dilated right ventricle with perimembranous ventricular septal defect measuring 2.5 mm and there was mild dilatation of the right ventricle so uh, when we had a look at the outflow tracts we could find that the pulmonary artery there was bulbous dilatation of the main pulmonary artery as well as the right and uh, left branches just prog just uh, proximal and distal to the dysplastic pulmonary walls abrupt cut off of the pulmonary artery is noted at the level of ductus arteriosus due to ductus arteriosus absence in three vessel trachea view we could find the bulbous dilatation of both the pulmonary arteries and the branch um, both the branches of the pulmonary artery and the main pulmonary artery uh, so this made us conclude that there was absent pulmonary absent pulmonary valve syndrome so this is situs solitus and uh, this is a bulbous dilatation of the pulmonary artery uh, pulmonary uh, pulmonary artery giving rise to the dilated bulbous dilatation of the pulmonary artery branches so this is the color showing uh, there is re, uh, turbulence turbulent flow at the level of the pulmonary walls and regurgitation as well so there was a vsd and uh, this is a right sided aortic arch and uh, this is the main pulmonary artery this is a dysplastic pulmonary um, this is the rpa and the lpa this, this was a case of absent pulmonary wall the absent pulmonary wall uh, Uh, there is uh, leads to post uh, absent pulmonary wall or abnormal pulmonary wall leads to uh, leads to post stenotic dilatation of main pulmonary artery and its branches the types are non tof and tof type this was a tof type of uh, in our case it was a tof type of uh, uh, apvs there are four important features that is the ballooning of the main pulmonary artery and its branches second one is the regurgitation uh, regurgitation at the pulmonary uh, wall and uh, we find uh, re, um, high velocities across the wall case 10 24 year old primary who came to us for anomaly scan at 21 weeks non consanguineous marriage no family history both the uh, both the atria were opening into a single morphological left ventricle the right side was hypoplastic Uh, and uh, left sided morphological left ventricle was communicating through a vsd and uh, great vessels there was no crossover again and there was a parallel orientation and the aorta was arising from the anterior right ventricle whereas the pulmonary artery was connected posteriorly to the left ventricle so uh, the ventricular atrial uh, discordance with the rudimentary right ventricle connected to the aorta and the left connected to the pulmonary artery anterior aorta is anterior and right wall position related to the trachea was the only two vessels in the 3v tv and the ventricular connections was reversed coming to uh, the final diagnosis was uh, uh, double inlet left ventricle with a uh, anterior and right wall aorta so here we can see that the left atrium and the right ventricle right atrium and the le uh, left atrium both are draining into the uh, morphological left ventricle right ventricle was hypoplastic the situs was maintained so this is a tricuspid wall this is a mitral wall which are seen opening into the left ventricle on 3v tv two vessels were seen which was the aorta so this is uh, the inlet vsd there is a malposition uh, the left lvot was arising from the uh, morph uh, morphological hypoplastic left ventricle and the rvot was arising from the left ventricle so the ductus arch arising from the left ventricle and the aortic arch arising from the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery was arising from the left ventricle so this is a table showing the uh, findings
of each case and the uh, outcome and confirmation was done by what um, method the first case was transposition of great arteries confirmed by expert opinion went for termination corrected tga confirmed by expert opinion uh, they went for termination complex cardiac disease with uh, toxic being form of uh, uh, dorv with inlet psd and subpulmonic vsd confirmed by expert opinion uh, third, fourth case was just uh, overriding iota with the malaline vsd termination Con uh, complete transposition of great arteries with avsd termination dorv with atrotic pulmonary artery and right sided aortic arch terminated tetralogy of fallow went for the went for uh, termination and then autopsy and i have shown the images common arterial trunk and pulmonary artery with vsd they just terminated it absent uh, pulmonary wall termination and uh, dilv they went for termination. Contruncal abnormalities are structural abnormalities involving the outflow tracts. Uh, the diagnosis becomes difficult here because most of them have a normal four chamber view. So, detailed and extended uh, cardiac examination, including the ventricular, arterial, and the atrioventricular connections, is of paramount importance. So, the fi fetal uh, diagnosis of structural heart disease is currently increasing due to the policy of uh, prenatal screening of cardiac malformations during the routine scans. So, this is very important for us to. And diagnose these cases. The conclusion is uh, fetal echo is a valuable tool in early detection of serious defects as, such, as, uh, such as these conotruncal anomalies because they require fe early fetal uh, uh, inter early fetal or postnatal interventions, especially in cases with high risk. Positive consanguinity is a major uh, serious problem in developing uh, countries, which is usually associated with serious major problems in the offsprings. Thus, early screening to detect these defects uh, that may need early intervention. The findings of our study reflect that the careful survey of outflow tracts would help in diagnosis of conotruncal abnormalities, not only the four chamber view. The most common errors were associated with the determination of great artery relationship as most of the abnormalities had overlap. Low socioeconomic status and lack of awareness about the facilities at the tertiary centers lead to termination in all our cases. In our study, we had cases of tetralogy of fallow, DORV, complete TG and corrected TG in the decreasing order. So these are my references. Thank you so much.